Hello, everyone. Welcome back to um, another episode of uh, Web Development. <clears throat> Let's uh, take a look at uh, where we've been so far and uh, where we might be uh, going. I always, I always like to go back to the agenda just to you know, keep us, uh, um, keep us in, in time and make sure that uh, we are following uh, the you know the various topics that uh, we're going to be uh, covering. Also, you know, reminding that um, we are. Uh, you know, splitting up the uh, the course into two large buckets, kind of mirroring the architecture of building web applications, right? We, the web applications follow a specific architecture where you have a, a client and a server that um, you know, collaborate, right? Being able to co uh, to um, compensate, you know, some of their own limitations where the uh, client uh, can, um, uh, you know, render a user interface and interact with uh, humans, you know, and take in uh, events that um, as users click and drag and type, move mouses around, right? And then can take these uh, stream of, of events and update a, a, a data structure or the state of the application and then render it back to the user as a feedback, right? And, and, and then you have the server that, you um, that that compensates some of the limitations of the uh, of the client where the client can access a file system can access networks databases and whatnot so so the the server you know running outside of browsers uh, we can integrate with them so that they we can uh, delegate to them some of the things that you cannot do on the client side such as you know accessing the file system networks databases and whatnot right uh, so so the the the, uh, the the course follows that same structure where the first half of the semester focuses on the client the second half uh, on the server and so for the for the front end for the client side that we've been uh, discussing you know for the, for the last couple of weeks we've discussed uh, html right as a as a language that uh, is um it's, it's a declarative language that allows us to declare right how things should look on the screen right it's not programmatic no, it's not functional we can't compute things Right, it's it's, uh, it's static, just static, plain old ASCII, uh, you know, XML-like uh, language that just stipulates that certain things should be laid out as headers, paragraphs, tables, lists, right? and and also provides us you know, with a, with a hierarchical structure that uh, can then be parsed by browsers so that it, they can render stuff on the screen. Uh, we also introduce it within the context of uh, React JS applications, right? That uh, we can um, create functions that can compute these uh, user interfaces through these this HTML uh, this HTML that uh, renders on the client and the browser right, can be coupled with a uh, with JavaScript right so that it can compute you know, basically being a function that based on events based on uh, data structures uh, we, we can compute what the user interface should look like right and that's what we're doing we, we, we're creating functions that can can import each other right into bigger modules and build a larger application. So, yeah. So for the first couple of weeks, we've been discussing HTML. As uh, as you might have noticed, right, the the user interface doesn't look very appealing. Right? We've uh, been um, you know talking about uh, rendering uh, lists and tables and form elements, right, and it's not very appealing. Right, it, it doesn't look anywhere uh, like the uh, targets. A user interface that um, uh, we we are looking for right this this more polished um, you know user interface where we have uh, you know nice uh, nice fonts and icons and background colors foreground colors and things are highlighted and you have borders um, and and um, right and you and and, and so it's, it's absolutely a much nicer uh, look and feel so so that, that that's going to be the focus of uh, of this week, right? And and next week, and how is it that uh, we can use uh, CSS cascading style sheets, right? Another programming language that um, how we can use it to modify or to configure the the look and feel uh, of the um, of our user interface so that it looks more what the target look and feel is, right? So how how can we style this so that it, it can look like that? Right, how can we, we can but how can we style this left hand side over here this left hand side so it looks like um, more like the target uh, screenshots that we've been sharing with you right so that's going to be uh, the focus for uh, you know this uh, couple of modules 
when um, and then and later on, uh, we will introduce um, you know, JavaScript as a programming language for being able to do algorithms and functions and classes right, that um, uh, can compute, you know, use data structure to compute what the user interface uh, should should be. Right, but that's a, a little ways out. Okay, so so that's the uh, focus of the next couple of weeks. The the first quiz should be available uh, this week. Right, you can take that quiz anytime. The uh, answers won't be available for another couple of weeks, or, or maybe a, at least a, a week or so. Uh, so, so when when you do get the um, the your grade, uh, it it might just display the answers that that you wrote, right? But it won't show just yet the right answers. Uh, so if you could wait off on feedback, giving us feedback on the on the actual grading and uh, you know why you lost points or not. Uh, you know, give it give it a chance for to to see what the uh, right answers were and compare it against what you what you type. The uh, the quiz is going to be on HTML, right? On on everything that uh, you you've been we've been discussing for the last couple of modules, right? All on that. Also, uh, remember that um, I'm big on uh, on on acronyms, so make sure you know what HTML means, uh, URL, uh, www, right? DOM. You know SAP single page applications, um, so HDP. So make sure you know all those uh, acronyms. Okay. Um, so so anyway, so what any um, any questions so far with um, with our plan? All right. Let's um let's discuss the um let's discuss the topic for this module. So take a look at the uh, third module. Hi, excuse me, professor. Yes. Um, I I just submit my homework and I haven't started a quiz. Uh, I want to know if it's a multiple question, multiple choice question. Yeah, let me let me let me discuss that. So all my quizzes, uh, exams, um, they're all they're all uh, multiple choice and fill in the blanks, um, and um, they, they it usually entails me giving you a puzzle. Uh, usually, I'll give you a small snippet of code, right? and then I'll, I'll with the lots of fill in the blanks. Uh, and then I'll ask you to fill the blanks so that it behaves the way it's uh, it's described, right? So I'll t I'll tell you, you know, uh, create, you know, th this code creates a, uh, an input field that you can type text, but uh, you don't see the text. You know, you it it it, it displays it in small little uh, little, little balls, right? Black balls, so you can't actually see the characters. Um, and so that, that gives you a clue that this is a type password. And I'll give you more clues that uh, if you remove all the text, um, it shows some uh, grayed out uh, little piece of uh, label, kind of giving you a hint of what to do. Uh, so, so that should be a placeholder. And that uh, if you hover over the, the, the field, it gives you a small little tooltip pops up, right? So that's a title, right? So, so yeah, and I might say, well, it has got a default value of Joe or whatever, right? So you know it's a value. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll give you clues on how it should behave and then you have to fill in the blanks so that it does uh, what it's supposed to do. Thank you, Professor. Okay. All right, so uh, for this, um, for this lecture, right, we're going to focus on the third module, right? That's going to cover the topic of cascading style sheets. Right? So let's talk about cascading style sheets. Yeah. So let's talk about CSS or cascading uh, style sheets. So cascading uh, style sheet is a another declarative language. You know, just like HTML, HTML is declarative. It tells you that certain things should be headers or paragraphs or lists or tables. 
right? And and the way it displays whatever you see on the screen, whether it's using whatever font it's using by default, right? And the sizes of the font and you know that that heading ones are bigger than heading twos and so on and so forth. That means that browsers themselves right, have a default style sheet. Right? So for instance, if you if you look at um, this this uh, rendering, right? If you take a look at the uh, inspect, uh, you, you know we'll we'll be focusing a lot of our attention for the next uh, couple of modules in in another tab down here. See these styles down here, and uh, you'll notice that uh, if you if you hover over this uh, header two, which is header two, notice that um, there's uh, down below there is a set of rules that specify how that heading should render right and uh, for instance it says and the way it does it is by referencing right the dom referencing the 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 data structure that the browser parses right the browser parses the html and it creates this data structure the dom data structure right and this and it's a, and the dom is this hierarchy right of divs and headers and tables and blah, blah blah rows and and then and then you know the the way it, who, who, um the way it's determined of how that should render the you know the fact that header two for instance is smaller than header one right that is determined by a style sheet right? and a style sheet uh it uh, specifies that um uh it specifies rules uh to follow on on how to render these things right so for instance, the rule uh, he is, is written in this syntax, right? Where you have on the uh, left side of the syntax, you have what is called a selector, right? It selects or it references things in the DOM. It says, hey, all H2s rendered, right? With this particular font size, uh, this particular margins, of, you know, margins is the, the spacing uh, between the content and the rest of the other content. Okay, whether also the, the, the weight of the font, whether it's bold, right? The, the, and there's many levels of boldness, right? Very, very bold, right? Or not so bold or very light. Uh, and, and so so this is, is stipulated by a user agent style sheet. Uh, what that means is that the user, user agent means the browser, right? The browser itself by default has its own style sheet. Right? And it says that if it, if in the DOM it finds an element of name H name H two, that's the name by name. If it's if it's H two, then uh, it should render you know using this uh, using these these properties, right? So so the rules uh, are made up of a left hand side, right? The, the 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 selector, and then the right hand side is a list of properties with their values. Right, and the properties is just tons of properties, and learning about CSS is about learning about many, many of these properties. No, not all of them. You can get by with with um, you know maybe twenty, thirty percent, right, of all the properties. But it's just a huge amounts of properties of what you can do, right. Uh, and in particular, you know, display block means that this um, notice that it takes up the the whole width. Uh, of the of the parent, the parent is this div over here. That's the that that's the parent. So notice that the this h two because it's block, block means that the the the, the width, the width is as wide as its container, its parent container. And its parent container is also block, right? Meaning that its width is as big as its container. And who's its container? Well, this this uh, column. And the column uh, is um, also take what wants to be as wide as it, it wants, and, and and then and then inside the the row, right? It's the right hand side, and then you have the left hand side over here, left and right, left and right, right? And then you have the the row itself, right? That belongs to the the whole table, and then the table is inside of the entire canvas, right? And each one has the display block, right? Whether uh, you know these headers are also blocked. Each one has its own font size. For instance, this um, this H one, this H one over here, right? As the, the 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 default style sheet says that the the font size should be twice as big as the normal size, right? Normal size is this one. This is normal size, right? Which is I think like sixteen pixels wide. Uh, we can see here. We can inspect. 
right? And um, right, so it doesn't it doesn't say what size. So the the, the default size is, I believe, sixteen pixels. Uh, the, the the font. So so that that's uh, that's a uh, the base size, right? So headings. This heading uh, of Canvas is twice as big, right? EM means that it's um, um, relative, so it, it's a uh, it's twice as big as the base size, right? It, it also specifies the you know how much margin there is at the beginning, margin on the on at the, at the end, margin above and margin below. Also, whether it's it's bold, right? Um, and and so so these are rules that are in the default style right and what we're going to be learning is how to change this right or override this def this default style right so so learning about style sheets you know css is all about overriding this and saying hey i don't want this uh, h1 to be 2m actually i want the font size to be 3m you know and be three times as big or four or five or six and override the size, right? And also override maybe the foreground color. The foreground color by default is black on white, uh, but we're gonna learn that we're going to be able to override that property uh, to, to be say red, okay? Uh, so notice, notice that uh, some of the, it shows here, right? That uh, the rules can, can collide, right? Or there might be some ambiguity on on what is the actual property value because notice that font size uh, this rule h1 says that the font size is 2m whereas this one says that the font size should be 6m so the question is well which one is it is it 2m or 6m right so learning about css it's also about learning you know um, you know what if, if there are several rules or different or several properties that refer to the same element right in this collision how are these uh, resolved? Because it's actually a major feature, right, of being able to override, right? And well, so how is it override so we can make sure that uh, it actually behaves as, as expected? Uh, so we'll talk about that. So notice that uh, this display is saying that even though there's two font sizes, uh, this one is overwritten, right? So notice that it's, there's a strike through. That means that this was not taking precedence. Mine is taking precedence, right? Uh, so, so there it is. So that's 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 what we're going to be uh, doing for the for for the next uh, couple of uh, modules. Let's uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the slides that cover this material. Uh, so, cascading style sheet is a declarative language that allows us to specify how things should be should render. Right, that certain things should be of a particular font, font size, uh, you know, of um, the the color, the background color, and whatnot. Okay. And so, so these are, you can specify the, uh, the, these properties, these, um, and the values, you can either specify them directly on the pro on the elements, right? Such as, such as saying, you know, style, and then the foreground color is green, right? Or you can specify them in a style attribute and a separate attribute, or even better, the way we're going to be doing it, we're put, going to put it in a completely separate file. Uh, it's going to be a CSS file. And what we're going to do is that we're going to import that CSS file into our code. OK. Uh, so let's uh, let's uh, talk about a, a few examples right, of uh, learning how to use this. Now, now this example that, that is shown here is uh, based on a plain old HTML, just plain HTML. OK which we're not going to be using. We're not going to be using just raw HTML. We're always going to be using HTML within a React code, within a TSX file, right? So we're not going to be actually writing, you know, .html documents. Instead, it's going to be embedded HTML inside of some JavaScript or TypeScript code. Uh, so this syntax right, is the raw HTML, right? Instead, uh, we're going to be a little bit higher level Right. So, so instead, we we're going to be using a slightly different syntax, right, than the raw uh, HTML. Uh, and so, in in um in in TypeScript or or JavaScript inside of React.js, uh, the style attribute is not a string, right? In the in the raw HTML, it is a string. Style equals a string like that, and you have the property colon value, and then you can separate them with semicolons, right? You know. Uh, property colon value semicolon 
property colon value semicolon, right? And you can um, you can see that here. Notice that uh, we apply these properties and the values uh, down in this editor. Notice what's happening to the DOM. The DOM is writing for us, you know, style equal and then property colon value semicolon property equal value, right? Obviously, this is not um, this is not a dynamic or it's not saving the file or anything like that. It's being edited. On, we're editing it on the fly in the data structure, you know, but it is following the correct syntax. Okay. Uh, but we're now we're going to actually do that, do it that way where we use your know, name value pairs inside of a string. Instead, right, we're going to be using a, a higher level syntax where instead of this being a string, instead of style being a string, right, it's going to be a JSON object expression, right? So, so, so let's take a look at that, right? So a JSON object is just a, um, is a, a, a JSON object, right? It's a whole bunch of properties with values, property, value, property, value, property, value, right? Uh, you know, property, colon, value, comma, property, colon, value, comma, right? And you have a whole bunch of this. So for instance, this opening curly bracket over here and this closing curly bracket uh, is declaring a JSON object, right? Who's, that has one property, background color, colon, right? And then yellow. So it's a, it's a string property, right? That whose value is yellow. Here's another JSON object, right? That opens in here in this inner color curly bracket that has two properties, right? Background color is blue, right? And then the color is white. And then we close the curly bracket, see that? Um, and yet another one here, we have background color red and foreground color white. Uh, now to, to um, embed a JSON object into something that is uh, HTML, to embed H uh, um, JavaScript syntax inside of HTML syntax, uh, we have the extra curly bracket out here. See that curly bracket, curly bracket. And so, so this is the, the, the so the outer curly bracket is kind of like an escape character, right? It allows you to escape the 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 uh, HTML syntax and then go back into the JavaScript syntax. Right? Remember, TSX and Java and JSX, right? Um, are uh, is a is a new language that allows us to intermix right JavaScript uh, syntax with HTML syntax, right? And and so we need to know how do we go back and forth, back and forth between uh, JavaScript, HTML, then back to JavaScript, then back to HTML. So, so the way we, um, we, we go uh, from HTML back into JavaScript is by uh, adding these outer curly brackets that saying, hey, what, what follows is not text. Right? This is not literally HTML or string or anything like that. It's an expression, right? It's a JavaScript expression. And, and here, the JavaScript expression happens to be a hard-coded JSON object, okay? Make sense? It, it could have been a function. You know, once, once, once I escape the, uh, the HTML with this curly bracket, in here, I can put any valid JavaScript um, syntax, right? I can call a function, right? Um, I can instantiate something. As long as, you know, the, the style here expects to get to have as its value a JSON object. As long as whatever you put in here evaluates to JSON object, you can put any expression here. You can put a function and that function could calculate some very complex JSON object, go out to the database, right? And do some queries, it comes back. As long as it evaluates to a JSON object, you could put a function here, right? A total, any expression, make sense? All right. Uh, so my, my, my point was that uh, here, this paragraph, uh, we are providing a JSON object, right? That has the background color property to to be yellow. This one blue, and this one red, and it renders as as, as shown here. Okay. Um. So another another uh. Okay. So typically, typically, uh, using style attributes usually it's considered to be a bad practice. Um, when it was used uh, in the context of just regular HTML, right? Um, well, it's, it's still not a great practice, right? But it's not it's not seen as awful as as doing it when you do it in HTML. 
Um, so, so here the 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 you know you can you can put you can hard code the the expression right here on the uh, on the on the element. You can say, well, this is background color yellow, and that's it, right? Now, one one of the challenges uh, of using style attribute is that it takes the most precedence over any other way of changing the style. This is a question. Uh, with the onclick function we added previously be an example of this uh do you mean in, as an expression instead of the curly bracket yes you could you could put a function in there uh but in in the case of the onclick right it um it, it was only invoked when uh, when you clicked or when you interacted with that element in this case the function would evaluate immediately Right, and return some calculated JSON object without having to click anything. Right? So, so this would have to immediately come back with some JSON value. Otherwise, I would not know how to, how to render it. Right? But yes, you could put an expression in there, absolutely. But not necessarily cause to uh, run because of some event. Right? It would immediately have to come up with some value. So the the so the one of the caveats of using the style attribute is that it is of the highest um, priority. You know, it supersedes any other way for me to change the style, right? From from other places, okay? That we'll see in a minute, uh, and and so so it um, it it makes it a little bit harder to to make the 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 source code or the the styling uh, to be a little more um easier to change right uh, or uh, more flexible okay uh, because it's hard coded over here right there's there's no way for me to outside maybe come in here and change it from 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 some other algorithm it's stuck now this one uh, using styles in in tsx or, or javascript is not so bad right that that we use this over here because this could be a function this could be an expression that can where you can embed the algorithm, right? The the um, the calculations, right? The um, uh, you know that that uh, so uh, so it doesn't need to be uh, hard coded. So so it's not viewed as bad as when you use uh, styles in a static string, because it's an expression, right? We could embed algorithms that uh, could 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 allow us. To write, at, you know, look and fields that are dynamic, right, and are computed, right, and um, uh, and so it's much better. It's not viewed as as a uh, as bad, right. Uh, another way that uh, we're going to uh, apply the look and feel, right, is that um, instead of applying the the properties and the values directly on the elements, instead of using styles, another another way of doing the same thing and also you can combine these two is that you know you don't use the style attribute instead you use another attribute called the class name attribute so the class name attribute allows you to collect several properties right from so for instance collect these properties and, and um and then group them together right and then give the collection of properties give them names reusable names Right, so for instance, uh, this uh, collection of you know blue background and white background, uh, what white foreground, um, I could give it a name. I could call this you know white on blue, and now it's a variable. It's a variable, and then so instead of having to you know uh, come up with the these properties, right, and then just you know property blue, you know, background blue, color white, background blue, color white, background blue, color white, instead of you know, applying the same styles in a whole bunch of different places, I can I can take these collection of properties, give it a name, right, and then and then just reuse that name, right? and then go apply it, apply the uh, the styling uh, white on blue to anything that I want to color uh, with that look and feel, right, and so the way we do that, right, is by uh, using uh, what are called classes, right? So classes are is a mechanism where you can name 
Right? Give a collection of properties and values, give it a name, right? and then you can go and use that name uh, and apply that style to anyone you want uh, using the class name, class name. So for instance, um, here uh, I, I took the um, yellow background and I gave it a name. I called it background yellow. And here I called it background blue, background red. Uh, now, obviously you might say, well, why don't I just use the background color property and use the style instead, right? So trivial. Uh, this this doesn't buy me much, and that's true. The, uh, the the you know this would buy you more, right? If instead of just one property, you would have maybe ten properties, yes. And, and those other properties not only would it make it the background color blue, but also the foreground could be white, right? And it would be a specific fonts, right? And a specific font size, uh, and you know bold and blah blah blah. So it would collect, you know, five, six, seven, ten. And then all in one single name. And then that name, I can just go and apply it uh, using class name, right? Now, the, 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 the way you declare the, uh, the class names is by you know, providing a, um, an, a, an identifier like this, right? That, uh, and then, and then a prepending a dot in front of it. See that? Putting a dot in front of it. And, and so this makes this a class. So a class is basically an identifier uh, that collects various st uh, property style properties that you can then use that identifier to apply it right to any element using the uh, class name. Okay, uh, so so you can say wherever you apply uh, you know background yellow like this, then it will apply you know background color yellow. Okay, uh, now you can combine classes. Right together, like for instance, you might have a color white uh, and a background color and a background blue, and and so so to to a particular paragraph, you can apply uh, both stylings. You can apply uh, background background blue and color white, and so this would be render white on blue. Okay, and so what it'll do is just is just you know combine the properties of one and the other, combine them into one single. Uh, set of styles, right, and it applies them to that particular element. Notice that uh, when you declare them, when you declare the classes, you put a period in front of it, but when you apply them, you do not put the period in front of it, okay? Um, also, the uh, naming convention here is that uh, we use dashes, right, when these are compound words, right? We don't use underscores, we don't use capitalization, Right, we use dashes, right, for the naming convention uh, to to combine them. Now, this is slightly different on, on the property names. The property names that we use in style it, are camel case. That's because uh, this is JavaScript, right? This is the JavaScript language, and JavaScript uses the same naming convention as Java, right, or or C, right, where you know if you have an identifier. Uh, the it's all lowercase, and if the identifier is a compound word, right, then it uses camel cases where it will capitalize the first letter of the of each word except the first one. Right. So okay. So because this expression is Java, right, the naming convention is slightly different. Right, camel case. Whereas this naming, these names here are uh, in the language CSS. Okay. Also here. In the in the CSS language, properties are dashes. Right when you have compound words right? like background color, there's a dash there. See that? Now when you use it in in the style, because again this is not CSS, right? This is a JSON JavaScript expression. It uses the camel case name nomenclature, whereas in CSS, right, uh, pure CSS, it uses the, the dashes. Make sense? So each language has slightly different naming conventions. So I'm just pointing them out, okay? Um, so, so what we're gonna do is that uh, we're, gonna, we're going to start using these types of uh, classes. We're gonna be declaring them in separate files, such as the styles.css file. Uh, and in there, we're gonna declare a whole bunch of um, identifiers. Uh, we're gonna de declare classes that are going to allow us to you know, collect multiple properties 
right? And then go in and apply them uh, using uh, the class name, okay? And the way we're gonna bring it into our uh, source code is by using an import statement. So in a separate style sheet, CSS, right? We're gonna do the import, okay? Everybody good? All right. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, colors. So colors you know, allow us to you know, bring attention uh, to different pieces of content, you know, highlight certain things. Um, or uh, or or um, or do some contrast. I'm going to turn off the video because I don't. I'm not quite sure if it's recording it on top of the shared screen, um, and so I don't. I don't want that to be. I don't want that to be in the final recording of the of the lecture. Uh, I'm concerned that uh, it'll put the entire. Uh, set of um, of participants, right? And and we don't want that. So so I'm going to turn off the video, uh, just in case it's appearing on the right top corner. All right. So let's start again with uh, colors. Right? Yeah. So colors is going to allow us to you know, paint the uh, the screen with with different colors, different background colors, foreground colors. And it's going to allow us to create contrast and highlight certain things, right? Uh, you know, also, you know, create perhaps a palette uh, of, of a color scheme, right? That um, that that we know that that um, is is pleasing, uh, is a is aesthetic, right? And um, it, it might make it easier uh, to you know for 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 presenting the uh, the information the visual information for to the to our audience, right? Uh, so the simplest way of, of um, providing color uh, to to uh, your content is uh, by using the color attribute or property, right? And then use a string to specify what color you want. Now this uh, this color can be a string that can be uh, I, either uh, the name of a color, and there's you know, millions of names right, for for colors. Uh, or it can also be a um, an RGB expression right, that uh, tells you either in hexadecimal, right, how much uh, you know red, green, and blue there is, right, or it could be in um, in decimal, right, uh, with a, a value between zero and two hundred fifty-five, you know, for each one of the components, red, green, and blue, right, or in hexadecimal, right, zero zero to FF. Right uh, in each one of the red, green, and blue, and combine. Right, you can specify the uh, the colors. Right, uh, you can also specify the background color of uh, of an element by using the background color property. Right, and again, the same name. Name. This could be a name. It could be a uh, hexadecimal expression. Right, or or RGB. Uh, so so let's uh, let's do a couple of um, exercises right to illustrate you know how would you use uh, these uh, styling right so let's see yeah so let's uh, let's work on uh, a few of the exercises uh, for the second assignment right so remember each assignment is split up into two halves right the first half is uh, several exercises that gives us a chance to practice some of the skills. Uh, and then you're asked to, you know, apply those, you know, those skills to actually build something, right? So let's uh, let's create a lab two. Let me copy that. And uh, here we can go to to the labs. And here's uh, lab one. And lab two is is kind of empty, right? So so let's see. So we had created on the lab. We had here lab one. Uh, lab two, we have put it in there. Let me put in lab two. So there's lab two, right? Uh, and and so lab two is um, it declares a a div, right, with an ID. Please honor the IDs. And then it has a heading of lab two. That's the this heading right here. Then um, you know styling with the style attribute. So here's the style attribute. 
saying that the background color is blue and the foreground color is white. And there it is, right? So it's white on blue. Pretty simple. Okay. Um, and um, so, so let's take another example that, um, that we had said that um, we wanted to, uh, instead of using the style, uh, what we want to be able to do is, is um, uh, put all our styles inside a separate file, right? Like index that, CSS, right? So let's do that under lab two, right? Um, let's put it in index.css. Now notice that lab two right now is a single file, uh, but because we want to have multiple files to build lab two, uh, what we really should have done is have lab two be a folder, right? And then, and then the entry point would be an index file like we did for lab one, right? So let's follow the same strategy here. Let's create a, a folder lab two and let's move lab two into lab two folder. It breaks it. I'm going to say, no, don't, don't rename it. Right. Instead, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to say, rename this to be index. Right. And though now it works just the same way. Uh, so, so yeah, so that, that works. Uh, so by now, right. We can, we can uh, not only just have our uh, TypeScript uh, file, uh, but we can also split off the uh, the cascading style sheet file right and put it right in the same folder right so we say index.css and it's very typical to to you know, to follow this strategy where you know if you have styles that are specific to one screen or one particular component uh, then you would create a, a css file of the same name as the component or screen that it is associated with right so uh, here you would um, import we would import the um the index like that like that so it's imported uh, so so what we could do now is that is that we can now move the style right we can move the style into the new css file right we and, and give it a name you know, so for instance we can grab this and i don't know what we gave it the name um uh oh we said paragraph p so we can we can uh, grab that you can grab that those two components and just remove the style here notice that it goes back to its default styling of black and white and so we're going to move it into index we're going to say that all paragraphs right have this style right now because i'm moving into a css file i need to follow the syntax of css not the uh, not the syntax of javascript right in javascript again we use camel casing uh, whereas in CSS, uh, the the you know the way we separate compound words is with you know all lowercase and dashes, right? So we say dash and then capital uh, lowercase c, right? And also the the way we separate the properties is by semicolons, right? Not commas. Commas is again that's in the syntax uh, of um, uh, of of JavaScript, right? So this would be semicolon. So let's save that. And there it is. Um, so this says that all paragraphs, right, are uh, background color blue and foreground color white. So let's save that. Let's go back to index. Let's save that. Let's refresh. And this didn't work. Wait, what? <laughs> Index.css. Index.css. Index. Huh? Uh, labs. Why are you not rendering? See. Inspect. Here's the paragraph, and it's what's what's it saying? Huh? There's some error message. What is the error message? Let's see. Let's stop this. Let me restart. giving me an error, what is that? Invalid property value. Improper val property value. Oh, yes. Um, in, um, yes, uh, so definitely it's um, all lowercase and dashes. Also in, in, in a JSON uh, property, properties are strings. So you have to put the double quotes uh, whereas here, 
you know, blue is a reserved word, right? It knows that uh, is, is blue. Uh, same thing for white is also a reserved word. So there's no need for the, for the double quotes, right? So the double quotes were there because, you know, we copied it uh, from a JSON expression, right? Where, where the, you know, the, the property value needs to be one of, one of the, um, data types, right? So, so when it was in JSON, uh, the data types can be either a string, a number, right? It could be a variable, right? So this, this, this would have been a variable in, in JSON, but we didn't have a variable called white. So we didn't have a variable called blue. Instead, we, we were using the strings blue and the string white, okay? Uh, so notice that um, now the paragraph, this paragraph, right, is indeed uh, took on those, uh, those two properties of blue and white, uh, that paragraph, uh, and it's being is being configured by index.css. See that? It's a uh, it's um it's it's taking it's it's taking some of the properties from the user agent style sheet. Like you know, we're still display block. We still have the margins, right? From um, that we are inheriting from the from the user agent style sheet, but here we are adding some of our own. So both rules are being used combined, right, to render my paragraph. Uh, together, the, the ones that are provided by default by the user agent style sheet, plus my new stylings. And I can override a few of these here. I can say that the, um, the margin, right, at the top, right, is 50 pixels. Right, so I, I am incrementing the margins above me. Right, so there it is, so 50, um, or I can change the margin on the left. On the, on the left, right, I can say, you know, 80 pixels. So I can you know, be away from the, from the left, right, and, and have you know, spacing on the, on, on the left-hand side. Right. So all of these are working together, right, to give the, um, you know, the, the styling uh, to that one paragraph. Okay. Now, the, 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 the problem of, of, of now applying it to all paragraphs is that, well, what if I have another paragraph and I want it to look different? Because this is saying that, that my selector is selecting all the paragraphs in the, right, if there's another, if there's another, Paragraph, say I have another paragraph on uh, lap two. Oop. Oop. Uh, say I have another paragraph. Let's say P lorem ipsum. Oop. Notice that uh, it has exactly the same styling of my other paragraphs. You know, um, and so any paragraph that I put would have the same styling. Notice if I inspect this, right? This paragraph has the same style as this other paragraph. This other paragraph, see that? Same color background, color background, color uh, margins. They all have the same styling, and that's because my rule, my rule, the selector, right, is grabbing all the paragraphs. It's saying every single paragraph should look like this. Okay, and maybe that's not what we want. Right. Uh, so let's uh, let's keep uh, discussing this. Yeah, you know, some other basic styling that uh, was you know created uh, when uh, HTML had just come out. You know, was like bold, italic, underline. We don't use those anymore. Instead, we use CSS. Uh, font weight, right? Font family, font size allows us to you know, change the the font look and feel. Right, so we can say the, the default font is Times New Roman, but you can make it Courier or Arial, right? any number of, of fonts, or you can download new fonts. Right, there's a, there's a whole bunch of free fonts out there, right, that, that you can install, right? and then host them yourself and and load them in and import them into your into your file. Um, so here's a here's a couple of of um, uh, utility 
classes that, that uh, are going to allow us to you know, declare a few colors, reusable colors, right, that we're going to be using throughout the, uh, the exercise. So let me, let me copy that. And let's put it in our index. Let's put it in our index over here. So here we're, we're declaring a few kind of like utility classes, right? So that uh, instead of using, you know, style, color, black or style, color, white or something like that, instead we are giving them uh, useful names, right? That we can remember right? and, and then apply them uh, through the classes. Also classes are gonna allow us to combine you know, some stylings with other classes, right? That are going to apply both sets of styles, right, to whatever element we have that we are combining multiple classes, right? And um, and so let's uh, let's create, for instance, an example of colors, right? And in index.tsx down below, okay. Notice that uh, we have these um, colors, uh, the foreground color, so colors. Let me close this. We have colors, right? We have the this H3 as the foreground color, color blue, and this one, uh, this this paragraph is the foreground color is red. Uh, so this whole thing is red. But then notice that you have this little span here that says this text is green, right? Is uh, adding a color green. Uh, so notice that the the paragraph outside is red, right? But when it gets to a span. Right, it uh, it declares it to be green. Right, so notice that in here it's uh, it's green. Okay, and notice that uh, if I have text afterwards, right, notice that it continues to be red. See that? So notice that here we have red because the the whole paragraph is red, but this small little and it's made it green. So there's the green, and then it continues to be red because the whole paragraph is red. Um, and so let's also declare a couple of background colors. This would also be useful. So in the index in CSS, right? Let's declare that. Perfect. Right, and then uh, we have a couple examples of uh, declaring a couple of headers and paragraphs to he have those those background colors. So there it is. So background color. We we're showing the background color uh, to be a background blue, and then the foreground color to be white. And there it is, so it's white on blue. Uh, and then this one is the foreground color uh, black and the background color to be red, and there it is, right? Okay. Uh, and then the class overrides it to be white on green, and there it is, so this is white on green. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I am going to remove this style over here because it's screwing up my rest of the style. So I'm going to remove that paragraph. It's, it's changing all of them to be blue. And we don't really want to do that, right? We don't want to, um, well, sometimes we do, right? Where we, we say that everything, you know, this particular set of elements, they all have to look the same. And so you would do something, but not by name, right? You would typically do it by class. So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's talk about the uh, box model. So box model is a um, set of collection of properties, right, that, um, that, that uh, have a, a, um, a very profound uh, effect, right, on how something is going to render, right? Uh, in, in particular, the uh, positioning uh, on the screen, from, you know, relative to other things, uh, uh, whether, you know, the size that's going to take, right, the height and the width, right, also the borders and the background, right, and the margins, how far it is from other elements. So it's, it's got one of the more important set of properties, right, and collectively they're referred to as the the box model. And so it uh, it comes from the name, the name comes from the, the fact that, um, you know, every piece of content Right, uh, we can consider it to be some kind of rectangular shape, right? 
And, and there's several concentric rectangle shapes that are responsible for different parts of where and how content is going to be rendered on the screen. So notice that uh, in the middle, we have the actual content. So this might be actual text. It could be a single word, single character, or it can be a large paragraph, right? Now that content, around that content, we have several concentric rectangles, you know, around that content. First, we, we find the uh, padding, right, around the content, right? And, and this uh, you know, describes a rectangle around the content, Right. And uh, it, you know, it, it, well, we, we have a border first of all. We have a we have the content, and then there's a border, and then there's there's space inside the border, and there's space outside of the border. Now, inside of the border, the spacing is called padding, and the spacing outside of the of the border is called margin. Right. So padding. Let's talk about padding first. So padding is uh you know having a border. Padding is how far the content is from the border. Now, by default, the content, you know, there is no padding. Padding is zero. And so the content is flush with the border. Okay. And, and so we, we might want that, maybe not, right? Uh, but then you might want contents to be, you know, pushed off a little bit from the left side, you know, pushed down a little bit, right? So you might want to. Uh, control the the padding. How much padding you have at the top, below, to the left, or to the right? There's a question in the chat. Uh, do we have a web chat or other group for this class? We do. There's Piazza, or you can chat here as well. Is that what you mean, um, Shinkao? What do you mean? Well, Shinkao, if you need to chat, right, you, or you have a question, you can post it here on the chat, and um, you know I'll answer it as I see them come up. Uh, if you mean a, a way to asynchronously ask questions, we do have Piazza. If you are not invited, uh, let me let me know, and you either send me an email or, or or post it here in the chat, and then I'll invite you and make sure that uh, you're part of Piazza. Okay, so, so padding is internally, right, inside the borders and how far left, right, above, below the, the border. Whereas margin is how far I'm away from, from the, the other elements, right? You know, the margin above, it tells me how, how much below I am from the, the top, my, my, my sibling above me, or margins below is how, how much higher I am from the sibling below me right and the border is the border right is it's a rectangle um line right that circumference right or perimeter uh, around the contents right that can be also be styled you can change the color uh, of the border you can change the, the style the dashes dotted things like that right and how thick you want them and you can also you know configure the color uh, of each border above, below, left, or right. So let's take a look at that. Let's uh, play around with these various properties, right? So again, margin is the space in between. Your know, border is the perimeter around the content, surrounding the content, and then padding is the space in between from the border, right, into the actual content. And then this plus, you, you can configure, you know, how wide or how high things are, and then put them in a particular uh, location, right? Uh, so, so let's um, also, it, it, when we discuss the uh, box model, it's also uh, important to discuss uh, two important uh, rendering uh, um, strategies, you know, rendering strategies that the browser can take, right? And, and that's um, uh, either the block rendering strategy or the inline rendering strategy. So we already saw an example of block. What block means is that uh, you have a piece of content and if it's rendering block as a block, then it wants to expand the width of the element, wants to expand as wide as the container will allow it, right? Uh, the, the outermost container is the, the window itself. So 
So a paragraph is of type block or headings of type block. And so, so it, it wants to be as wide as the window, okay? Whereas you have inline, inline uh, is a um, content that wants to uh, render from, from top to bottom, from left to right, right? So it's content that just is in line with the rest of the content. So it renders from left to right, right? And so in the next space, right, it renders. Uh, for instance, if you have a word, right, each each line, each word, it's each character is rendering in line. You know, it's, it's read from left to right. Anyway, in this culture, it's left from left to right. In other cultures, you might read it from right to left, right? In some other cultures, you might write it from read it from top to bottom. But anyway, in this culture, right, things render from left to right. Uh, and then, and then you know, when you add, when you don't have any more space on the right hand side, then it just wraps and it continues the in the next line, right? Um, so, so oftentimes we'll discuss how elements want to, you know, what strategy are elements using? Is it using block strategy or inline strategy, right? And also there are certain types of imp uh, fields, right, that are by default they behave as blocks or inline. And you need to be aware uh, what the default rendering strategy is, right? So for instance, block, certainly uh, headings are blocks, you know, paragraphs are blocks, right? Whereas span are inline, okay? Um, so, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a, a, this uh, example here. Oops, sorry. Let's uh, copy this and let's uh, render this. Let's say over here, yeah, block versus inline. And let's take a look at what's in here. So we have a uh, block versus inline, and we have a, a paragraph. A, 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 we have a heading, right? That's a, a type block. And then you know, headings and paragraphs are block elements. With the width is the parents' width, right? normal and so yeah so this wants to be as wide as the parent this wants to be as wide as the parent it's also the heading so for instance if i hover over the paragraph or the heading there's a paragraph those that it wants to be as wide as the parent even if uh if it doesn't fit the uh the whole width notice if i hover over paragraph notice that that it um it highlights the blue there it's saying that it wants it is as wide as the the uh, parent component allows it to be. Right? Same thing for the heading. Even though all the text doesn't need all the space, it indeed takes up the entire, the entire uh, space. And, and having block elements one after another has a side effect of pushing right, and rendering things uh, vertically. Right? So you have block, 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 block. Right? It renders content, right, uh, you know, uh, uh, vertically, okay. And um, now, elements that a uh, content that is are inside of, of block elements. So say, so you have these, you have this heading. Uh, notice that, notice that uh, I made, you know, I made the screen smaller. And, and notice what happened to the content. Notice what happened to the content. Right, it doesn't fit. See that? Uh, before it did fit. Before it did fit, right? So there was a little more space uh, left over, but when um, there's not, not not enough space, the inside, right? Like the text, like you know, headings and paragraphs or block elements, blah blah blah. That content behaves uh, inline, right? So the paragraph itself is is block, right? But the content in the paragraph is inline. Unless you override it, or you or you use maybe some other block element inside the paragraph, okay. So so yeah, yeah let's take another example of uh, taking that same content, but then highlighting some of its color. So for instance, in the in the heading, let me let's copy this actually. Okay, see that. Uh, notice that um, we have highlighted the uh, the um the heading we have changed the background to be yellow there it is see that black one the yellow uh and then the paragraph itself we made it the background blue which it is 
and the foreground color white. So headings, yada, 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 width. Um, the normal text is, um, uh, there's no way to apply styling to this, to this uh, normal text because, you know, we would need to surround it or uh, embed it inside of other HTML elements so that we can apply the style or the uh, classes. So notice that uh, we've been working on the uh, second assignment. And um, as one of you was pointing out, uh, we should uh, make sure that you know as we work through this, I notice that uh, we have been creating a couple of files, move a few things, right? And you, we should remember, right, to switch over to the correct branch. Notice that we are on branch A1, right? So that would be you know wherever we left off with uh, assignment one. Uh, but make sure that when you start working on all these exercises, right, you switch over, right, to branch A2. Right? And as you go, as you are satisfied with all the work that you've done so far, uh, you can, you know, you can get at everything. You can commit and say what, what, what you just did. You know, start it on CSS Lab 2. It's committed, right? And we should be able to just push it. Now, when you push it, right, it will you know, ask you to create the the branch A2 also in the remote repo. So we'll push down now to um, branch uh, A2. All right, so let's take a look at uh, styling uh, borders. All right, so to style borders, right, notice that um, we um, we styled the H1 to be background color yellow, right? And that's all we did. But uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these uh, span elements that we haven't touched just yet. Uh, let's do npm start so we don't forget, right? We have the spans, right, that we had made background color red, which we have, perfect. And then uh, we can, um, the color was white, perfect. Uh, and then let's add this, border style, solid. Okay, so, oh. Did I copy wrong? Oh yes, I copied wrong. Let me copy that, like that, like that. Okay, so notice now that the span elements, right? Without this, it's just a just regular background red. The whole thing is background red, right? Uh, but right, if I if I change the border style to be solid, right? Notice that it is solid indeed, right? We change the the, um, the 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 size of the border to be ten pixels, and we made the whole border green. Now you can target you know individual size uh, uh, individual borders, right? Uh, you know if you if you only want to style the top or the bottom or the left or the right, you can you know target that individually or right in this case here we are targeting all of them at once. Right. So, so you have a couple examples here uh, where you can um, you can configure the uh, these individually. So, for instance, if you want to if you want to configure the width of the top one, you can say border width. Uh, notice that uh, the IDE tells you what are the various options. So, you can say the top width. Notice that I've only changed the top width to ten. I can change the border bottom, maybe 20, so twice as big. Notice I've made it twice as big, right? And then the border to the, to the left, maybe only five, and the border on the on the right-hand side, five, 15. So you can target individual ones, right? Or, right, you can um, provide 
a configuration for all, all four, like this, your border color changes the color for all of them. Or again, you can target individual ones. So you can say maybe I only want the color green for the right border color, oops, border color. Uh, so if maybe only, only the left is, uh, is green. There is a notice only the green, only the left is green. Uh, the right hand side, maybe I want it to be blue. So there it is blue or the top to be red, right? And the bottom to be yellow. So you can target individual ones, right? Which is pretty cool, okay? So again, you can either target all of them at once or individual ones. Uh, margins uh, allow us to you know, configure how far we are from other things, right? For instance, here, and the, the the paragraph itself, I can change the you know this this paragraph over here. Uh, so I, I think these are headings. Yeah, headings. These are the headings, and I can change the margin. Say margin at the top. Margin top, uh, I can make it bigger, so maybe 50. So notice that I've, I've increased the space between the paragraph and the block. Okay. Uh, you can also you can also see the configuration of each one of them, each each of the properties here yeah, as a as a box graphically, right? You can see that there's some margins that I added at the top uh, for this particular heading. Right here's the uh, this particular paragraph. And notice the the are the salmon salmon color or like the peach color right so notice that here right it shows you uh and shows you the the value here is 50 right down below is the default margin bottom to be 16 right and the top one is 50 so notice that it, it, you know that's why it shows so low all right Right, so padding, same thing, right? You can specify the, the space in between. So inside, so for instance, notice that the, this text, right, of this paragraph is flush, right? Or yeah, kind of like touching the edges, right, um, uh, of its container. Uh, so you can, you can add some spacing, right? So you kind of get away from, from, the, from the container itself. So you say, you know, I want some padding 10. There it is. So notice that there, now there's some spacing Right, between the content and and the edge, right? that looks much more professional when you have you know all these white spaces, you know that that separate this. It makes it much easier uh, to read. So you should apply those. Uh, you can also change uh, whether a, a border is is um, you know the width. We we looked at that examples of that. Uh, so in, for instance, in this case, um, uh, we can declare several several borders. Right, of different style. So in the CSS, uh, here we have declare several styles, you know, border fat, right? So we're going to um, change the, the, the size of the, of the border and uh, the, the width. And you can specify either one value, you can specify just one value like that. So that sets it up for all four. Uh, or you can specify the values for the top, right, bottom and then left right clockwise right? this specifies all the sizes you want or you can specify individually if you want border top width border left width border bottom width and bottom and border right width you can specify it either as individual properties or one property and specify multiple values right or just a single value right which is the same for all of them right so the different ways of saying the same thing um so and so here's a couple of paragraphs that exercise those classes uh so for instance let's uh paste it here in the bottom All right so notice that we have here a um you know a uh, a paragraph that we have giving it you know fat uh, borders right above below to the left to the right right and and, and it's solid 
right? Whereas uh, in this one, you know, we're, we're using the dashed border, right? Again, to illustrate. Um, yeah, so, so here we have um, examples of you know, applying these classes to various divs right, that uh, are then rendered right, with the padding at the bottom uh, and then no padding at the top or the or the uh, or the left, right? Only the bottom and the right. And whereas uh, this one is adding uh, padding all around, right? Of uh, uh, fifty pixels. Okay. Uh, you can also configure the rounded corners. So you can you can make and that, not only the the width of the borders, but now the borders can also be rounded, uh, so that you can create you know effects like like this one over here. See that that um, this slide right, uses a rounded corners. Also, you have rounded corners you know, for buttons right, or for search input fields and things like that. Right? Certainly, you can have icons that you know, show an entire you know, rounded circle. Right? Um, and so you would, uh, you would um, achieve this uh, by using the rounded corners uh, property. So here's an example of uh, using rounded corners. Actually, let's create first the, the CSS. So in CSS, right, let's uh, add that. Right, and then and then rounded corners, right, we can uh, specify, we can specify that uh, we have uh, rounded corners above, only, uh, only at the top, okay? So anyway, so go through these exercises and explore uh, all the all the labs. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a, a short break, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue playing around with uh, CSS. All right. All right. Don't go anywhere. All right. Okay, so let's uh, talk about uh, assignment two. So a time, assignment two is going to allow us to practice some of the skills of uh, using CSS, you know, cascading style sheets, right? and uh, styling the uh, HTML that we've been working on so far, right? so that it looks more what the uh, target screenshots should look like. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the. Uh, the assignment. So the assignment, as always, right, the first half of the assignment is gears towards practicing several skill sets. Right? And then the last part of the assignments are always you know, applying those skill sets, but building a, a um, an application, right? And the and the application that we're building is the um, the canvas or the canvas application, right, inspired on the um, successful online learning management system. Now, so, so in, in this case, the, the labs that we are working on presents quite a few skill sets. So one of them is using the uh, the, the the language CSS, right? That um, that allows us to um, you know learn about how to apply the styling to different elements, right? Either by the name of the um, of the element or by the class or by using IDs, right? Uh, so these, these exercises are geared towards that, um, you know, different uh, uh, CSS rule selection mechanism, uh, also, you know, using different uh, coloring uh, for coloring the foreground or the background, right? And also, you know, styling the, the borders, you know, you're following the, um, the box model, right? That uh, you can style the, the margins, the border, right, and the and the padding, right. Uh, so this this gives you a chance to practice uh, some of these, right, and learn about what is possible. What 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 can you change? What are the various knobs that you can change to so that it makes it look the way you want it to make make it look? Uh, corners, right, dimensions. You know, being able to resize things and and then you know, position things, you know, relative to each other or absolute on the screen, um, and then. Quite a few you know, learning just about CSS in general. 
Then um, we also, in this um, set of labs, we want to learn, you know, how we can, can we um, bring in some icons, you know, some imagery, you know, some small bits of imagery that uh, can, you know, summarize a lot of information on just an icon or a small bit, bit of imagery, right? Uh, and so uh, this gives you a chance to practice using uh, React icons, right? It's um, an open source library that collects icons from many other uh, libraries, right? And uh, puts them all into one single place, right? As um, and you know, wraps them inside you know, uh, React components, right? That you can then com um, configure and customize for your for your own, right? And so this, this so it gives us give an example on how to bring in a few of these icons, right? And practice with that. The other thing that uh, we'll notice, you know, as you go through the CSS uh, exercises is that it's not, it's not easy to make things look pretty and polished and, you know, finished, professional. <laughs> it, it's quite hard, right? So, so you, usually what developers do is that Yes, we learn the fundamentals on how to create, edit, modify, understand CSS, but it's seldom that you start from scratch, right? From using just just plain old CSS. Often the case, it's also often the case that we use libraries, right? That declare, implement a you know a plethora, a family of CSS uh, classes, right? That um, that we can then apply right through through a particular class right applying it to, to a particular element you know if you want to paint certain things to look in a particular way or, or so even you know either individual elements or entire widgets right and, and so there's a lot of a lot of these these uh, libraries out there uh, we're going to be using a bootstrap Right, that um, is uh, going to allow us to style things, you know, styling tables so that they look a little more uh, presentable. We can style the, the look and feel, the colors and whatnot. Um, we can style switches and, you know, and, and drop downs and things that, that look prettier, right? And um, also, also a, a, you know, all sorts of, uh, of, of forms, form elements. Uh, so that again, they, they look, much more professional, uh, but you know one of the more interesting uses is to be able to lay out things on the screen so that it's responsive. Responsive, uh, meaning that um, that uh, that that the the content is still usable across a, a, a various numbers of um, screen sizes, right? A, a very a, a varied set of widths right from very wide screens to you know maybe um, you know smaller monitors or laptops or tablets or even phones right so the same application the same page the same screen right, can adapt right and you know by either hiding content or expanding things and contracting other things or wrapping things in a specific way right and and relay out itself right depending on the screen size uh, yeah, so to, to illustrate, uh, for instance, uh, here you have the um, uh, the canvas application. It's it's responsive, right? So so here, for instance, um, uh, if uh, if uh, for instance, if I start resizing the screen, notice that the the middle content, right, the middle column, it, you know, adapts its width to the width of the entire screen, right? Uh, notice that the that the the other columns, right, the sidebars on the left hand side, right, and the sidebars here on the right, they don't change widths. Right? Instead, the main content here is you know shrinking or expanding. Uh, but notice that uh, once it reaches a particular screen size, right, uh, when it goes below a specific threshold, right, say you know below. Uh, some particular screen size. Notice that the right-hand side is going to disappear, right? So notice that, boom. Notice that there's a threshold that, where the the layout decides that you know it's it's way too narrow, 
say that the the main content over here it's kind of being squished right and and so so it needs to make a decision on prioritizing what should it show should i should it show the main content you know are the sidebars still or or maybe not right and so i can i can decide what is important what's not and so i might decide to just drop the right hand side to in whatever space that i i you know i'm economizing on um that i'm hiding i can give it to the center right to the main content so that it can expand right and uh, so so that so that you can read uh, read it better right and so if i keep going even further Right again, um, I have you know less and less space to show the main content, and, and so that uh, when I reach a particular threshold, again I hide you know the the, the left hand side bars over here. I hide them so that um, I can uh, leave the the main content still viewable. I can still view this even even on a phone, right? Uh, even so, in such a small screen, uh, this content is still usable. I can still scroll up and down, right and and uh, and and collapse you know all the all the modules right and quickly go all the way down and then expand a particular uh, module and see what the content is right so this is total total usable still usable on a phone right so so we call this uh, responsive design right and and so these the, these libraries um, you know have dedicated set of classes that allow us to program right or, or at least configure uh, the screens right and apply uh, css uh, classes right to to specify when things should show up or hide right or collapse right or then show again a, sp a specific threshold right so so that's that's going to be one of the focuses uh, also of um you know of of, uh, of these modules right of you know introducing the uh the bootstrap library for uh, you know, for uh, Im implementing um, responsive design. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So in the in the assignment, then you know, once you have a chance to practice, you know, those skills of implementing, you know, bootstrap, you know, navigations and and whatnot and and styling and and, and you know resizing and responsive design. Uh, you're then asked to apply, you know, revisit the, um, you know, what you had already implemented for the Canvas uh, application, so that, so that you know, using the CSS, you know, you can you can um, style the existing implement implementation, right, so that it looks more what the target styling should look like. So so it shows you well. Now, right? We're gonna we're gonna go through the exercise of styling this so that it looks more like that, right? And it has you know quite a few um, you know changes in the um, in the style, right? Applying certain classes, right? Applying you know, bringing in several uh, icons into the source code, right? And so so that you know, eventually what it looks like is like that, right? It looks like uh, much more closer to what the target look and feel we want, right? Uh, same thing for the for the dashboard, right? We want to re-implement it so that you know instead of being this you know this ugly uh, list of courses, you know instead of being this ugly list of courses, the dashboard, um, we we actually want it to render uh, in a grid, right? So so we show you how to use Bootstrap right, to create you know a grid uh, that is also responsive, meaning that you know, as the screen becomes smaller and smaller, right, also the, the content starts wrapping, right? So for instance, on, you know, in the widest screen, it might show, you know, four columns and, and two rows, but as the screen becomes smaller and smaller, right, uh, the, the, these contents kind of like wrap around, right, so that it sh they show the, in the next row, right? But still in a grid system, all in the same width. So as it becomes smaller and smaller, it becomes two columns, one column, and then just, just one column without the left side sidebar, right? So, so again, uh, using you know, Bootstrap you know, to learn how to make this, uh, you know, responsive uh, in a grid, right? Uh, looks professional, finished, polished. Okay. Um, also, you know, um, you know, re revisiting the implementation of the 
course navigation and that when you go into a course uh this this uh, uh set of links right we go, we're going to style it so that they look more like what the target uh what the target look and feel is right where the, the font is red on white right we we have the highlighted uh, with this this bar on the left whatnot right and it changes the foreground to be color black, right? So, so we go through that exercise, uh, and then we go and and style the um, uh, the modules, right? So that um, it looks more like this, right? And and you know we we first style the the top level buttons and drop downs, and, and then create the small little components, right? That uh, for um, you know for editing uh, each one of the lessons, each one of the courses. Right, so we implement these as separate components and drop downs, right? That we can then combine, right? Uh, to to be able to edit, you know, a particular lesson or a particular um, core uh, uh, module, right? So we go through that and build all the small components. We style them and put them together, right? To to have these little controls on the left, right? Um, and and then build the the home screen, um, and introduce a new screen that we have not implemented in the previous assignment, the, the people's screen, right? The people screen is a, um, a table that displays all the students, faculties, TAs that are associated to the, uh, to the course, right? So for instance, here we have a couple of, of students and TAs, right? That um, are you know, part of the uh, course. Uh, then, you know, once you had this chance of styling this on, you know, with us showing you how to do it, right, uh, we ask you to, on your own, right, go ahead and style the assignments screen uh, and the assignment editor screen that, you know, you worked on, you know, on your own in the prior uh, assignment, okay? Uh, also, uh, um, do revisit the the sign the all the account screens right we revisited and and styled them to look much more professional again based on how we had shown you how to style all the sidebars and the forms right you're going to you know come come back and and apply those you know bootstrap classes to make it look you know a little more um you know finished polished professional okay so anyway, so that's the the second assignment. Uh, let's uh, you know, let's let's work on on some of the initial exercises, lab exercises, right? You know, just to show you that uh, a lot of it is copying and pasting uh, some of the content, uh, but make sure to go through the entire document and that uh, you're not skipping over anything. I do oftentimes, you know, show you how to do a, a small part. And then say, well, you know, finish it off on your own, or show you how to do something, and then ask you to do something else on your own, right? So I won't give you the entire codes, uh, uh, code snippets, right? So, but make sure you don't skip over them, right? Because you know they will be graded, right? We don't want you, you know, losing uh, points for something you might have forgotten. Okay, so let's go through uh, some of these exercises just to illustrate how how you would go about working on these, right? Uh, so. Make sure also to read the entire uh, documentation. You know, there's a lot of reference here as you know, presenting some concepts. Uh, so please you know, uh, read through all this. All right, so we have the, uh, the labs. We, I think we, we did this already. Uh, we imported the CSS. We play around with paragraphs. All right. So yeah, let's take a talk about selectors. So selectors, as, as we had mentioned earlier, you know, we've taken a look at uh, selecting things with classes selecting you know dom elements with the names right you can also select select um, uh, dom uh, content by their primary keys right so so for instance if um, if you had um, uh, say in the here in the labs um, Right here, if I, if I paste that, so notice that, let's go back to the labs, lab two. So here you have a ID selector that we just pasted in, ID selector. And notice that um, we are identifying 
this specific piece of content, this snippet of by a, a primary key, right? And um, so, so we can use CSS to target this specific item, the paragraph by its primary key. Uh, notice that the initial examples that we had shown earlier were targeting all the paragraphs, right? So these were all the paragraphs. And so if we want to be a little more granular, you can, uh, you can um, uh, uh, target the individual primary key, right? Uh, and the way we, we do that, the way we do that is by, uh, let's see, notice that uh, actually we have two paragraphs, right? We have uh, two paragraphs. We have the uh, one paragraph with ID selector one and ID selector two, see that? So we want to target each one individually. So here's an example on doing that. In the index, notice that the first one is targeting you know, ID selector one, and this one's targeting ID selector two. And there they are, see that? This one is being red and this one's being yellow uh, because the background is red, the foreground is white. Uh, we could change the color, maybe, um, right, whatever, orange. Right, and then we can save that and notice that it, it changes over here, right? Uh, and this one, we can change it to be something else. Yeah, green. Say that and those are changes, you know? So we're targeting those specific paragraphs, right? And the way we're doing it is with this hash. See that hash right there? That says that this identifier is a unique identifier, right? This, you can only use this identifier only once for a specific item, right? As opposed to, right, classes, right? that these are classes, or there's the period in front of this, right? This says that, this is also an identifier, right? But it's not unique. It doesn't have to be unique, meaning uh, this can be used multiple times in the DOM, right? You can, anything that you want to have foreground color black, feel free to use as class, as identifier, class identifier anywhere, right? In any item, uh, DOM element that you want to paint black, right? Uh, now, it doesn't mean that because uh, I said that it's not unique, that you can declare it twice. Right. Notice that this is not this. You should not do this. Right. We have you declare a class and then you declare it again. Right. Um, that makes no sense. Right. Uh, you would only do that if you want to. If if uh, you know this if this class maybe was defined by someone else. Right. Uh, that you, know, you purchased a Bootstrap or some other library that has a class, uh, and it has a very specific look and feel, but you want to override it. Maybe you don't want the way um, Bootstrap paints its buttons, right? You don't like the color scheme that Bootstrap chooses. Well, then you can define the same exact class on your own, and that it would override, right? The the uh, overwrite, right? The, whatever styling uh, was defined by the uh, library. Okay, uh, but regularly we would not do that, right? On our own, we would be doing it in the in terms of overriding someone else. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so go through these examples. Classes, we did that already. Uh, so another another imp important um, mechanism for selecting, you know, what part of the DOM are you talking about that you're targeting for styling, uh, is the um, the use of multiple identifiers uh, in the selector expression, right? So let me let me let me show you. So say you have this um, this structure here. Let's copy that uh, and let's uh, bring it here under here. Um, there we go. So so here we have here this uh, this content, right? They call you know ID you know document structure. So basically, we, what I what I want to discuss is the fact that you can you can target individual elements based on their relative position to other elements right uh, so so if you look at the at the dom right we had already discussed the fact that uh this is a hierarchy right uh, okay um it's a hierarchical structure right and so so when you you know here's the root of the structure uh, and then you have a whole bunch of branches you have a whole bunch of branches that um 
know, you can go, you know, down one branch or another branch, right? You can go uh, maybe down, you can either select this branch, this branch, or maybe go down into this UL and then further down or down this div and then further down, right? So there's a whole bunch of branches. Uh, and and so, so you can use CSS right, to traverse uh, the various paths, you know, starting at the root or starting wherever you want. You know, and then and then you can concatenate multiple classes or multiple IDs or multiple uh, tag names, right? To create to create a path, right? So so here's an example uh, where right here's an example of uh, let me copy this and let's paste it here in the CSS. And so so here's an example where we are creating a path creating a path, right? There's two selectors, there's two class selectors, right? And this is saying, hey, starting at this, um, starting at this selector, this particular item, you know, whatever item in the DOM has this class, I don't know, right? There'll be some DOM element that has that class. And then notice the space in here, and then you have another class, yes? Well, Two class identifiers, space in between. See that there's a space in between, and so that what that space means is that um, uh, the the um, you know, starting at the at the node of WS selector one, right? and, and there might be a branch that and there might be multiple branches, right? Uh, but I'm I'm saying that somewhere. Down below in any of or any of these branches, find me another element that has a selector three. Selector three. So it could be somewhere here. It could be you know several branches down, anywhere, right? um, starting from this down below. Right now, it, there could be many intermediate other selectors, other other DOM elements that are parents and children and you know grandchildren. Uh, and and so at any you know any number of levels down, I'm looking for some other selector that has WD selector three, right? So so this is kind of like a search. Starting here, look for somebody who has this selector. When you find it, if you find it, then that one selector three, I want you to paint it with a background color red and foreground color white. Okay. And uh, so, and it is exactly what's what's happening here, right? Notice that uh, what's happening is that this right here, let's inspect. There it is. Notice that it has indeed a class selector of selector three, which is this one right here, selector three, and it's red. That means that somewhere here, I have a parent element that has a selector one. There it is. See that? Somebody has a selector one, which is an ancestor of mine. Uh, and then there's a path to follow that has selector three. There is a path. That path exists regardless of how many intermediate parents and children there might be, right? So that's what space means. Space means any number of intermediate parents and children, okay? Now you can be a little more strict, right, by using the greater than strength, uh, character. So the greater uh, uh, greater than character um, allows to choose a specific path right, with immediate parent-child relationships, right? So for instance, uh, this, uh, this says, right, that, you know, um, if there is a selector four, uh, let's see if we can find one, um, here there is. So there's a selector four, right? And it has an immediate parent so that this means uh, there's an immediate parent, uh, which uh, with the class selector three. Let's see if we can. Do we have a parent? Yes, there it is. So there's an immediate parent that has selector three, and has an immediate parent of selector two, which it does. There it is, right? So if there is, if there's a path which exactly matches that, then the the leaf, right, the last one. Um, I wanted to paint background yellow and foreground color blue. And that's exactly what's happening here, right? So if I inspect this, notice that it's this one right here, right? Uh, which is uh, a change. It's, it's being set. You can see the style here. 
Notice that it's select, see that? This says that that rule is being triggered at uh, CS56973, uh, that one, there it is, right? Uh, this is being triggered and I'm painting this uh, yeah, um, blue on yellow because this rule applies, right? There is a branch, there is such a branch and I will paint it like that. That makes sense, right? So yeah, so that's the, obviously this is much more powerful uh, mechanism for being able to establish you know, specific relationships between you know, um, parent elements, child elements, and any ancestor right, uh, in between. Um, if we have WD selected three class inside another parent selected class, just like WD selected one, uh, will that get affected too in this case? If we have the three class inside another parent selector class, just like WD selected one, uh, will that get affected? Yes, absolutely. Right. So any occurrence, any occurrence of WD selector three, right, would be affected, right, with a parent of the WD selector one, correct, yep. Good point, yep. Um, okay, so go through some of these. This explains uh, some of the CSS rule mechanism, right, if you have uh, multiple rules that are applying to the same DOM elements, right, uh, they could be collisions that you know, one particular rule says that this should be yellow, and there's some other set of rules that says that this should be blue, right? And so there is a mechanism for to be able to distinguish right, which one applies, right? And so, but the, the number one rule is that uh, we're looking for specificity, right? If you have a rule that is much more specific than another one, then the specific, more specific one wins, right? So for instance, you know, ID, rules are more specific than class rules, right? Because ID, ID rules, you know, that have, have the, the hash, you know, there's only one element, presumably, there's only one element with that ID. So it's very specific. I want that element to be yellow. Uh, but then if it also has another class that, that says that it should be blue, well, the class selector can apply to any number of elements, right? because you can apply that class to a whole bunch of places. It's not unique. So it's less specific, right? So, so if you have you know, one rule that uses classes and another one uses ID, the one that is ID has priority over the one that has classes, okay? Um, other things that affect, you know, which, which, uh, which one wins if you have collisions and discrepancies between rules is that the source order, right? So, so you know, if, you, if you're declaring uh, your rules, your CSS rules, later rules override prior rules, right? So kind of like last one wins, right? Um, you know, so so it, that's a very important because you know later on uh, in Bootstrap, you know we we're going to want to override some some of that styling, right? That we're not going to like the default look and feel of Bootstrap, so we're going to override certain things so that it looks more of what we want. Um, and also uh, inheritance, right? So uh, child elements often inherit their stylings from their parents. So if their parent already set a particular font or a particular foreground color, right, all that gets inherited uh, down below, right? But that has less effect, right? Has a, a less priority than, for instance, specificity, okay? All right, foreground color, background color, we play around with that. Borders, margins, corners, we did that. All right, so let's take a look at real quick uh, dimensions, right? All right, so, so to do that, we're going to, let's create a, a separate component called dimensions, right? Where we can play around with uh, dimensions, okay? Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, create a separate component here, lab two dimensions. And let's uh, copy that, let's, let's say, um, So uh, export uh, default dimensions, right? We're gonna do return like that, okay? And let's uh, bring in this into lab two, bottom dimensions, there we go. Okay, so so notice dimensions, uh, it's basically what? Um, we have the, the 
the header right here. There it is. Uh, and then we have um, one, we have one, two, and then three divs. So basically three rectangles, right? And they appear right here, right? So we can see them here. We can inspect. Uh, let's bring this down below like that so you can see what's going on. So so we have these these three divs, one, two, and three, right? And divs, they are um, display block, right? Meaning they divs by default, they want to be as wide as their parent allows, right? So notice that it's taking up the entire width of the screen, right? There it is. This one, that one, and that one. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we can override the the the, the widths. We can say. Hey, no, I don't want you to use your default dimensions. I want you to be the dimensions that I say, right? And the way we're going to do that is that uh, we're going to apply uh, certain uh, classes. So here's the classes: um, dimension portrait, you know, dimensions landscape, and dimension square. Uh, also, uh, let's see: do we have these colors? WBG color yellow. Uh, do we have those? Uh, probably I skipped them uh, from a prior. Um, exercise. Let's copy those um, from colors. Let's see. A foreground, background color. Yeah, let me copy these here and I'll bring them into the index.css here at the bottom. There we go. So there, notice that now they're painted. Okay, they're painted in the correct color. This one yellow, um, blue, and red. Okay. Um, okay. And so, but now we, so, so that and, and it's being applied, right? Because we have these classes, uh, W, B, G color, uh, yellow, blue, and red, right? No, notice that we are also applying this other class right, simultaneously. And the way it works is that, yeah, you can apply multiple classes to an element. Uh, and then, you know, you just, basically you're just concatenating uh, all the rules, you know, that are for each one of those, um, of those declarations for these classes, right? The, you know, those properties are being uh, added up right, and applied to that same um, element. So, but this one, they don't exist yet. So let's, uh, let's copy that. Um, let's see, uh, dimensions. There we go. So let's copy these, these, uh, these classes and let's uh, paste them in the index. There we go. Uh, so notice what, what happened. Notice what happened is that these, these, um, these divs, change size right notice that let me let me do that again let me comment that out notice that by default right the width is as, as wide as possible and the height is is um basically the height of whatever is inside right whatever, whatever content is inside drives how high i am but the width is determined by my parent yes that is specifically the way um it block elements work, right? So now, now let's apply only to the first one. So notice that I only applied uh, to the portrait, right? Which is this one, right? And I, we did that by applying the class portraits that div. And here's the text portrait, yeah? Uh, so what did we do? We overwrote the width. We said that we want you know, 75 pixels wide. It's wider than the content, but it's not 100% like it wants to be right also the height is uh i made it 100 100 100 uh, pixels uh so you know portrait is a, this is a typical layout of a portrait right that uh, you have the height is taller than uh, than how, how wide it is right uh so there it is right uh, but notice that, uh, that that i can i can you know independently modify each each dimension separately let's now apply the uh the other two well, actually, now let's do the landscape. Save that. Okay, notice that landscape, it's kind of like the invert, what I did, right? I, I made it wider than it's taller, okay? Uh, and this was applied to this landscape, right? But by the class landscape over here, right? And then the color and blue, blah, 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 whatever, right? Um, and so I, did, I made it, you know, 100% wide and 75% um, tall. Uh, oh, it looks like these uh, foreground colors are not defined. So probably I did not copy from earlier exercises. Let me just copy these. Let me copy that uh, into my CSS. Uh, I'll put them like that. Foreground. Okay, there it is. So white on blue. Perfect. Um, 
So, so yeah, so notice that it is um, wider than it's taller. But notice that um, before portrait was the whole width and landscape was the whole width, yes? And uh, I had mentioned that because they're block, they wanna be the whole width. And because there's the whole width, they kind of, there's no more space to, to keep, you know, drawing after you've you've uh, you've um you've taken up the entire width of the screen right but here notice that landscape is actually totally fit here right we totally fit over here okay uh, but again that would behave like an inline right that it wants to continue the you know, from left to right right whereas block always is going to add a vertical spacing like like it's doing over here right this is pushing this down Right, so the the beginning of the of this edge of the landscape is determined by the bottom edge of portrait. Okay, so portrait is pushing down on the landscape. Okay, same thing with square. Square that the top edge of square is determined by the bottom edge of landscape. Okay, all right. So let's do let's do the last one. Uh, square. Let's uh, uncomment that. So we're making both you know, the height and the width the same. Seventy five and seventy five uh, square. Hence square. Right. Um, all right, so yeah, we can we can override the dimension. Let's take a look at um, uh, now. Let's talk about positioning. Positioning, okay. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, let's create a new component called positions. Let's see positions dimension positions positions dot tsx, and we'll do export default positions return. Oh, not position. Let's see. We need the the content. Let's uh, paste it in there. There we go. Um, and then let's uh, bring that into lab two. We'll bring it into oh, not there. Lab two. Where are you? There we go. So under we'll bring in positions. There we go. Okay. There we go. So positions. Right. So first we'll take a look at. Uh, the relative position. So there are quite a few ways that you can control position of items, right? Um, and um, and so we'll look at first relative position, right? And and so so let's copy the 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 CSS. Copy the CSS and um, let's do one at a time. All right. So let's do the first one. Um, actually, now yeah. I meant to do it in a particular order. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, there we go. I meant to do just one of these. Let's talk about just one of these. I think. Uh, okay. All right. So, what's going on here? All right. So, um. Right, so notice notice what's going on here. Uh, let's oh, let's look at the let's look at the uh, the HTML. So notice the the HTML of position. Let's sort of review that. What do we have here? So we have a outer div. We have a uh, the header. This header over here. Uh, then we have an outer div again, and I'm just making it gray. Right, I'll show you why. Right, it's important that we see the background. Right, we that for this exercise it's important that we see the container. The container typically would be white on white, and you would not see it, right? So I I am making it gray so that you can you can see what's how the how what we're going to do affects parent container. Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, so we have gray container, right, which is the parent to all of them, and then we have here three elements. We have the one we have the uh, portrait which is yellow uh, we have the um, the landscape which is uh, blue right which is blue and color blue there we go uh, and then the last one right this one is color red right the, the square one okay um, so but take a look at the um, portrait one this portrait okay uh, and let me let me uh, uh, comment all the CSS so you can see what happens, right? Just like that. Notice that this is very this is 
uh, just as the same, almost the same as this one. See that? Very, very similar. Not quite though. Let's take a look at uh, what's different. Well, what's different, right, is that we have this the text. See that? We have this text uh, is inside of a div, whereas the previous one, text, see that? It was just text. Whereas in this new example, that text is inside of a div. All right? Okay. All right. Um, so what's the point here? Is that is that I want to be able to control the position of that text, you know, by 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 itself, as opposed to in the previous example, it was just text, and I cannot control the position of this portrait uh, with respect to its parent. Where now I have a portrait in 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 its own div and surrounded by another div. So I can now control the position of the inner div relative to the position of the outer div, all right? And, and the way we do that is um, I'm applying this class and let's take a what this class does. Now the name of the class kind of gives it away. It says, I want a position, I want a relative position, I want to nudge it down and right, okay? So let's take a look at the, how, do we do, how we're doing that, right? So it's this one right here, nudge, relative, but nudge down and right, okay? So um, so let's do that. Let's, um, I don't believe, oops, don't believe I need this, not yet, anyway. See that portrait moved down and to the right a little bit. How many? 20 pixels, see that? And the way we did that, it says, hey, I want to move relative, now relative to who? Well, relative to where I would normally be. I would normally be at zero, zero. That would be where I am normally, right? Uh, but once I turn on relative, I can now measure how far I want to be from the various edges, right? Um, so, so here I, I can use these new uh, attributes, these new properties, top, bottom, left, and right, right? And so I can push off, right, from the top, from the left, from the right, from the bottom, right? Uh, so I can push off and say, when I push off, you know, just, just five pixels from the top. And notice that it, it comes down from where I would normally be. Where I would normally be, where am I? I would normally be where, you know, this didn't exist, right? This is where I would normally fall. Right? And then I can start measuring from there, relative from there. And that's what this means, position relative. Everybody good? Uh, so, you know, a little bit down and then a little bit to the left, you know, from the left. So notice that it's measured from left, right? Moves me to the right, okay? All right, um, what about this uh, relative nudge up and right? Where is that? So it's this one right here, nudge up and right, which is this landscape, okay? Uh, and that's where it falls. It falls there because, right, there all these guys are block elements and, and the top ones are pushing down uh, the bottom ones, right? That's so. This one begins at the you know the top edge begins where the bottom edge of the prior one ends, right? But here I'm going to apply a relative position that says, you know, uh, right here this one says I'm going to nudge you up and to the right, right? So I'm going to move myself relative to where I would normally fall. That's where I normally fall, right? So I'm gonna move from the bottom, I'm gonna push off 30 pixels, and from the left, I'm gonna push off 30 pixels, right? So I, if I save that, notice indeed, there it is, see that? Uh, it pushed off 30 pixels from the left and 30 pixels from the bottom, okay? So a couple of things here, right, to point out. Uh, one of them is that, um, notice that even though it moved up, the, the one at the bottom didn't move with it. Right, because remember, I had said that um, you know the bottom edge of the square um, you know, started at where the bottom edge of the landscape ended. See that, and 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 that would be true in other positioning schemes. But here, uh, relative allows me to move just me, just myself, relative to where I would fall without affecting all the other elements. Right, without leaving you know leaving every, every, everything the way it is right so it's just it's just me i am moving me regardless of what everybody else is doing right 
Um, and, and so, yeah, so that, that's one point, right? I'm not affecting how everybody else renders. If that, you know, the, their positioning is already baked in, okay? The other point that, that I want to make here is that landscape now is uh, uh, being drawn on top of portraits, see that, right? And, and, and you got to be careful, right? It's, uh, is, was this intended? Did we intend to actually put something on top of other things, right? Uh, maybe we did. You know, well, I certainly did because I wanted to make the point, right? And and so and, and the point is that once you start moving things around, and once you start overriding the default layout of the screen, right, of using just plain old block and inline, well, our you know like you're going to the possibility of breaking the layout, right? That that you might start overlapping stuff that wasn't supposed to be overlapped, right? And now you can't see certain things that are below me. I can't read it, right? So be careful, right? Now that you're starting to uh, override some of these behaviors, you know, just be careful uh, that and test it to see if it's indeed what you intended to do, okay? All right, so let's do, um, now let's talk about you know, absolute position, right? Absolute position. So absolute position. Let's um, let's copy uh, the the div here, and I'm going to put it below. So this is relative, right? And so I guess I need here and here a div. I'll close the div here. Uh, and then, so now I'm going to have this uh, other example that we're going to talk about absolute position, right? So absolute position, there it is. Um, so first of all, uh, I'm bringing in, a, I'm, I'm drawing the same thing as, as I had earlier, you know, just an outer, you know, outer uh, div. So we have the portrait, and um, we have the the landscape, right? We have the the square, but uh, none of the CSS is defined, right? So let's copy some of that. Let's copy, right? And I'm going to put it in the CSS. Um, I think I need, I might need this one now, and I'm going to copy this. I'm not going to save it. I'm not going to save all of them. Let's uh, let's first save that one. Okay. Notice what happened. <laughs> Already, I broke something, right? So so basically, you have this absolute ten ten this class. Notice I'm going to comment it out. Goes back to where it was, right? So it looks like this is only affecting the yellow, right? So let me let me show you. Um, uh, also, it might be useful to um, change the color of the parent one here. Let me, let me apply this gray, right, to the parent here. That yeah, so there we go. So I'm painting the parent to be gray because I'm going to make a point. Right. So notice that this div here is applying the class position absolute ten ten. What's that doing? Well, it's setting the position absolute as opposed to relative. Measuring ten 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 from the top and ten from the left. Right. And notice what happens here. Notice what happens. This is going to move. 10 down and 10 to the left, like we like would expect, okay? But you'll see that the landscape and the square are gonna move under it. Let me show you. Actually, um, let me save that. Okay, th there you go. See that, the portrait? See what happened to the portrait? The portrait went down 10, moved left 10, and the landscape and the square moved up, right? See that? It moved up. So what's going on here is, Absolute, not behaving like relative, right? Um, but notice what it's doing is that it's removing itself from affecting, right, the other elements. Meaning, it's removing itself from the algorithm that computes the rest of the positions of all the other elements relative to it, right? So before, landscape started at the bottom of the portrait. Uh, but when I when I choose absolute, the algorithm no longer uses portrait to calculate the position of landscape, right? So 
it's like portrait never existed, right? To calculate landscape, like if portrait is not even there, right? So landscape would fall where it would be if it would not even be there. That's where it would be, right? Um, and then and then this top, uh, uh, you know, ten ten, you know, top ten, left ten. It's a uh, the position is measured. Absolute position is measured um, by default. Measured. Let me let me let me um, remove this. <laughs> I don't it disappear. Where'd it go? Well, there it is at the top. See that at the very very top. By default, the absolute position is measured from the topmost and leftmost zero zero position of the window. Right in the window, there it is. Right, notice that, that there's a whole bunch of scrolling that you have to do. So, so, so this is the zero zero position of the window. So that's by default, default behavior. Okay, but you can reset the zero zero. You can say, well, it's it's kind of inconvenient that it's way up there. I want to I want to reset where my center is. You can you can move it uh, where that absolute where that zero zero is. And the way you do that is by declaring something as to be position relative. So it's to the nearest, right? Uh, to the nearest uh, um, element, parent element that has a position relative, okay? So if I save that, notice that now uh, it's being measured from the zero, zero, I've reset it to be the nearest div with a relative position, right? So which is in, the, in, our, in my case, this is uh, the one that I'm moving. Here's the nearest position relative, see that? So that's my new zero, zero. Make sense? Okay. Um, all right. So what about this one over here, 50, 50? I'm going to change the landscape. So the landscape here is blue, blue. I'm going to move it 50, 50. Uh, there is my 50, 50. So let's uncomment that so you can see it move. Oops. So let's just, just apply that one. Save. There it is. Notice landscape moved. Again, from zero, zero here, it moved down 50 and then left 50. See that? Um, and uh, so it's this, this zero, zero is measured from this zero, zero over here, right? So 50 and 50 is measured from this zero, zero. And notice again, right, the, um, the, the, the square, right, uh, is positioning itself as if portrait and landscape even exist, right? So that it moves up. Right? There's no one, these, these two uh, prior divs are no longer pushing it down, right? So, so it moves up. Make sense? Uh, and finally, uh, let's move uh, the square. Let's move square uh, 120 to the right and then 20 down, right? So let's um, absolute. So comment that, and there it is, portrait. So 120 um, from the left and then and then 20 down, okay? And, and oh, where, where did the background go, right? The gray background was there, it's gone. So that's important, right? Uh, notice what happened, right? The the uh, you you should have noticed that. Let, let, let's let's comment that again, right? So let's, let's comment that. Notice that the height, right? The height of the parent is given by the elements that are inside of it, right? Notice that the height right, is the height of the children, right? The height of the children make up the height of the parent. As we remove these from the algorithm that computes the positions and the heights and the widths, right? Notice that even the parent height, right? It's no longer being affected by its children because its children are not being used to calculate the effects on other elements. Okay, right? Very good, very important. Um, and, um, Fixed position on your own. Let's talk about styling a Z index, right? So, so Z index, let's copy that. Uh, let's create your Z index. And let's grab the content. So, this would be export, uh, default, uh, Z index, return. Let's paste that in there. Okay, so here's Z index. Oh, let's include that in lab two. Lab two, Z index here, Z index, there we go. All right, 
There it is, Z-index. So Z-index is basically the same content as before. We have things overlapping, right? And, and so, so when things start to overlap, right, you basically now have an additional function, right? Because before you only had, you only had, you know, X, but horizontal, you had the Y, the vertical, but now because things starts to of each other, now you have a, a question on, on, of, you know, what should be rendered in top of what, right? What's behind what, what's in front of what, right? So, so that means you have an additional dimension, the Z index, the Z uh, dimension. You have uh, the X dimension horizontally, the Y dimension vertically, and now you have the Z, you know, outside of the screen, right? Vertical to the screen. Um, so notice that, um, you know, by the, 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 uh, the way these render, notice that the red square, this, uh, it renders on top of the blue landscape and the blue landscape renders on top of the yellow portrait. Why is that? Well, it's because uh, they, uh, the elements are rendered in the order that they're declared. So first of all, first it renders the portrait, which is the yellow one. Then after that, it renders the landscape in the document order. So that means that whatever, when, I, when I render landscape, it's gonna, rent, it's gonna render on top of portrait. And same thing with square, right? Uh, it's gonna render on top of landscape because it's the last one that I rendered, okay? Um, so I can override that, override that. And uh, so here, for instance, I'm, I'm declaring a class called um, you know, Z index bring to front, right? Bring that element landscape to the front, meaning I don't want landscape to be under square. I want to be above square. It's already above portrait because of the order, but but uh, even though it's uh, it's declared before square, I want to override it and I want it to render on top of the square without le uh, moving the position. I mean, I could totally do it just by moving this. I can just move it like this and put it, here and then it renders on top of on top of them, but oftentimes I can't do that, right? I can't ch change the just the location of something. Uh, so how would I do that? Well, I can do that by declaring a class, right, and using the Z index attribute, right? So for instance, in the CSS, right, I can provide this, right, and and change the Z index attribute to something. Uh, something bigger than the default, right? Which is, you know, they're all on index one, right? So, so if I say anything bigger, notice that indeed is bigger than all the other ones, right? And uh, it renders on top of the other elements, okay? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, all uh, I'm gonna, have cover today for the uh, material for the lecture. Um, I'd like to open the floor for questions uh, that you might have. You know, so I'll run, I'll run this as an office hour. Uh, if you need help to uh, deploy something on Netlify or questions about branching or, uh, or you know, general questions, uh, let's, uh, let's have an office, office hour. Um, hello, Professor, good evening. Hi. Um, professor, so I had one, I'm facing one issue. So on the Kori Office Hours portal, I am unable to find the web devs uh, course on it. Um, so I'm not really sure why that is happening. Uh, are you a student? Yeah, I'm a student for this course. Did you did you join recently? Um, no, Professor, I have registered it long back. Okay. Um... So, so how, what, what do you have a link that you follow that you go? Yeah, with? one, yeah, yeah. Uh, so can I you copy uh, and paste I, it on the, on the chat. Sure. I'll just copy paste that. I also initiated one discussion on Piazza where I have shown the screenshot of how it looks to me. So maybe if you want, I can share that screenshot as well. Sure. Why don't, why don't you share your screen and we can take a look at it. Okay, sure, Professor. Just give me a minute. You can share um, your screen. 
Yeah, so it is asking, do you want to stop other screen sharing? Oh, let me stop sharing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Now you can share. Uh, yeah, now I think I have the option to share. Um, is my screen visible? Yeah, I can see your screen. Yeah, so when I go to the office hours portal, Kuri office hours, so I just see one course for which I am actually a TA for, but I do not get a drop down like uh, how my other friends are getting for web development. I even uh, type this course for, uh, 240 in the URL, I typed 248 as well, but it just shows a blank screen to me. Hmm, let me see. Right, no, but uh, did, they, did, did the uh, TAs share with you the URL? Yeah, correct. This is the URL shared by uh, shared okay, on Piazza. Can you paste that on the chat, please? Um, sure. Yeah. Let me see what I see. They're currently not logged in. So I'm logging in. Okay, so let me get the same URL. Oops. Interesting. I don't see it. <laughs> Let's see. So 48, right? Yeah, 248, I think, yeah. Okay, and so and you're CS5610, right? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me see if I need to override. Uh, it might be because you are also a TA. Yeah. You're that you're a TA in someone else's class. Uh, so it might be confused that you're a TA and a student. <laughs> so can you, can you post your uh, email on the, um, on the chat? Maybe I need to add you, override you. Oh, sure. I'll just uh, do that. Actually, I checked some of my friends who are using this portal as a TA and also a student in web dev. So it is working fine for them. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Can you please, yeah. please paste your, um, yeah. Email. Yeah. Okay, so let me copy this. Copy. I'm gonna add you as a student. Okay, I added you as an as an override. Can you can you try now going there again? Yeah, now, Professor, I can see both the cues. Uh, you are a student for this course. Okay, you can see it now? Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Thank you. All right, Thank awesome. You so much. <laughs> sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Have a good night. Good night. Um, professor, I'm also facing the same issue. Uh, okay. I cannot see the officers. Yeah. All right, can you paste your uh, email? Yeah, just doing it right now. Yep, done. Hold on, hold on a second, just a second. All right, so uh, Agrawal, right? Yeah. All right, let me copy that. And here, and fit 610, right? And email. All right. Okay, can you try now? Um, yeah, I can see it now. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, awesome. I just right. had one other question regarding the yep. assignment. Um, so mm -hmm. I just I have just recently joined this course, and I there, there was a little ambiguity around the landing page. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, should I have a different uh, landing page than the canvas canvas one? Um, so I I I would prefer that canvas would be the uh, landing page, but you know, if you prefer to be the the lab, that would be fine too. Um, 
or if you want to make your own landing page, that'd be fine too. As long as I can always get to the labs and Canvas and, and go back and forth and navigate everywhere. Okay, so I, right now I have a home page in place with labs link, my GitHub repo link and Canvas link as well. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, although I think I changed I changed the assignment to say that Canvas should be the the, uh, the landing page, but you know, you're not gonna be um, penalized for which one it is, as long as I can always okay. navigate everywhere. Okay, okay, got it. All Thank right. you. Uh, hello, Professor. Yeah, what's up? Uh, I have two questions. So, uh, the first one was about the Net Netlify thing. Uh, I was trying to deploy my project, but it wasn't okay. going through. Yeah, I did figure it out, like how to uh, deploy it, and it ran successfully. But the other problem is, do I submit the through the main branch, or should I create like another branch, just like you showed it in the lecture? So the, the, so I, I suggest that cre you create a, a branch A1, A2, A3, A4 for each one of the assignments. For the first one, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you submit main or A1, um, you know, either one is fine. It, mm -hmm. Just that uh, you know, make sure when you do the assignment two, it's not that branch that you are using for assignment one, right? You don't want to override Right, whatever you did uh, for assignment one, you don't want to override it with A2 because you want to separate them uh, so that the TAs can grade uh, you know, each assignment independently of the other. Right. Uh, the reason why I was asking because I did create a branch earlier and when I tried to uh, use that branch to uh, deploy it on Net uh, Netlify, the Netlify was able to like, uh, deploy the main branch, but for some reason it wasn't doing the same for the other branch. Yeah, so there are steps in the assignment that ask you to deploy all the branches. You go, you have to go to settings, branches, and then say all, mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll deploy all the branches. Now you you might need to force, uh, you know, make a change and, and push something to that branch. Otherwise, it won't mm -hmm. detect until you make a push. Uh, to or a new commit to that branch, it won't just automatically uh, deploy them until you make a change in that branch. All right, makes sense. And the other question I had was uh, the in the assignment, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when okay, how do I say this? Uh, but like in the assignment section of the assignment, there are like uh, we have like three demo assignments, right? And you asked us to create like a page with uh, where we can edit the assignment and stuff. And mm. there are like two buttons in the bottom, like one is cancel button and one is the save button. And I was wondering if the buttons are supposed to work or uh, as for now, it's fine. Right, yeah, they, they should bring you back to the assignment screen. Okay, so they're supposed to bring me back to the assignment. Right, tab. and and for now, if you want, you can convert, you can make them into links instead of buttons. Okay, that no, uh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And oh, sorry, one more question. Uh, uh, and you you told us to write the name uh in the in the landing page, which I believe it was the lab. Page, but now the other student asked us like if uh, the the landing page is supposed to be the canvas page. So should I write my name in the canvas landing page or no, the, no, no. the lab? No, so the ca canvas should be just canvas. Okay. Yeah, your your okay. name and things like that should stay in the labs. Okay. Uh, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Professor, uh, I'm yes. having the same issue that the other two guys had. I'm not able to see the. Okay, you wanna you wanna paste your email? Yeah, uh, yeah, just did that. Okay. Try now. Mm. 
Yeah, it's good. Thanks. Thank you, Professor. Sure. Mm, yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Have, I cannot access the... Um... Uh, I'm having the same issue. Could you yeah, please... if uh, if anyone on the call is having an issue accessing the um, the office hour link, can you please you know, please paste your email, uh, and then I'll go and just add add everybody. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Yeah, I have one more question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So it's it's like a follow up question for the the button one. Like when I click save, it, it is supposed to bring me back to the assignment tab. But is it actually supposed to edit uh, everything like the due date and the name no, of the no, assignment no, no, no. and stuff? Yeah, no, we we can't do that yet because mm -hmm. we don't have JavaScript, we don't have a server, we don't have data structures. We'll come back later, mm -hmm. right, and add, add so, all that mm -hmm. functionality. Okay, so as for now, just uh, if it comes back to the assignment page, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, okay. we just prototyping good. the navigation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Hi, professor. I have a question about the assignment. Uh, can yep, I share my screen? Sure. So for the assignment, do we just need to finish three point seven and three point? Eight, which are labeled with on your own. Uh, I'm like, sorry. Yes. Yep. That on your own. Correct. I I do give you some startup code like this. Um, yep. So you know, just feel free. To... Feel free to use it. Uh, but uh, you know, you can use it or not. It's up to you. Okay. So we just need to um complete this code and the uh, and. Meet those requirements mentioned in wait, in deliverables, and that should that should do it, right? Yes. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Bye. Um, the, uh, emails that, oh, did I misspell it? I was given two emails. Oh, that worked. <laughs> um, yeah, Wu Peiyi, you sent me an email, Ngon H, uh, that didn't, I could not, that could not be found. Let me try it again. Yeah, no user found with that email. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I made my name section and means that every the uh, uh yeah no Wu Pei Yi yeah no your your name should only show in the labs. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Akshita Singh uh, says that you're having trouble deploying Project to Nullify. Did you want to show your screen? Uh, yes, Professor. And then, uh, meanwhile, Ved Deepak, should our main branch always be synchronized with the latest assignment? It's not required, but I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, so if you know how to do that, uh, you would merge each assignment. Once you're done, you would merge it back into main. If you know how to do that, please do that. But it's not required. Hi, Professor. I have a question for the deliverers of the file because we are required to use the same name as 
in Canvas. So uh, if yeah. we are not required to uh, make our name section in the app, uh, so how could we do that? I mean, to so not this. not in the app TSX. You don't add it to the app TSX. Add it to your labs. When I go to the labs, I should be able to see your name. So that means we just need to uh, add our names in the lab section, not in, yes. in the canvas, right? Right, in the lab section, not in the canvas. So I should only see it when I visit your, your labs. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so this is, um, oh, is somebody sharing their screen? Uh, professor, I have to. Okay, go ahead. I, I, I think I saw your screen for a second and then I don't see it anymore. Are you sharing your screen? Uh, yeah, one minute, Professor. The network is unstable. Okay. Meanwhile, any other questions? I'm sorry, Akshita. Um, I'll be in. I'll be in um, uh, in Boston tomorrow. If you want to meet up, and uh, we can take a look at it together. Uh, okay, Professor. Sure. So you know, if you can pick me around, I don't know, like two ish, two thirty ish. We can we can meet maybe in Shillman and take a look at it together. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, anyone else? All right, if there's no one else, then uh, thank you, everyone. Good night.